people ask me is, do I center um, the whole pot or do I center the bottom? And a lot of times, uh, especially on beginner pots or people who want to alter pots, the rim will be uneven or um, up and down or kind of cockeyed or altered. <laughs> and so you don't want to really, you want to try and not look at from the middle of the pot down. You want to, you want to really center the top inch of the pot. If you have a pot, especially someone who's a beginner and it slopes, I just take a coil of clay and estimate and and put the coil of clay on the rim and oh, push it down. Yeah. That way yes. you don't have this. Yes. And I have a level in the studio and I just put a level right on top of the foot. And um, what you can do, I mean, you can see a lot of times for glaze, especially if you don't want the glaze to, when I trim a piece, I think about where the glaze is gonna be and a lot of times what glaze I'm gonna use. If I'm gonna use a glaze that's not runny, I would leave it just like I trimmed it. If I have a glaze that's a tiny bit runny, I'll put just this little shelf like here. It will stop the glaze. Um, and it also is a nice point for waxing the bottom because if you have just that plain bottom and really no delineation of where the side starts, then it's really tough. Then you have to, then you kind of have to have a very steady hand when you put the wax around. So, but if I have a really, um, runny glaze, I'll put a nice deep little cut here so that will cut the glaze. And then you can also take and put, hard to see, I'll, I'll pass it. Well, no, yeah, well, yeah, that would be such And then you can put like a little double, and I always the glaze, of just bringing the glaze right to here. Then you've got a good half inch. If it's a nice stable glaze, you can go down right to here and then that's more of a deck. <laughs> But um, but you can come in just slightly here on the side because it's almost in all pots. There's a little bit more clay right in this area. This first inch will have a little bit more clay, and you can see this is really a wet little bowl. Um, I try. I would rather trim a pot when it's a little bit wet because I can always use my torch. Um, so then. I just smooth it up and I find my, um, rather than trying to use a damp sponge, because a damp sponge so often, if it's just a little too wet, the water will drip down, get on your lugs, be a mess. So I, even with my students, I just ask them to, to trim without water if they can. I don't know if, have I done that to you, Kathy? Just yes. said, please don't use water. <laughs> So another nice thing to do is, and I'm really big into threes, and you can see I've got these three pulls here. So on this one, I would just go in between and just come here and put, and it looks so simple, but just putting a little twist to your finger. That's nice on that. Um, it gives the pot, even though it doesn't have a, a real foot on it, it's foot, but it doesn't have a, a trimmed foot, um, it gives it that tiny bit of lift. Just kind of dry this up just a little bit. This one I'm going to put <clears throat> to start a regular foot on. I mean, I made these, I'm trying to think, I think I made them Wednesday, so it was maybe Thursday, but they're still, it's just damp, it's sticky, mm -hmm. they're sticky. Yeah, but that's the weather too, Barbara. But, mm -hmm. but I would so much rather they be sticky than, than too, um, too dry, too dry. I mean, you know, we've all tried to trim something that was too dry, and then it just cracks and breaks, and it's just a mess, so. So this one probably is at least, um, what's in between? Who's a math person? What's in between <laughs> a third of an inch? Uh, I would say a, 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 somewhere between a half inch and it's not quite an inch. So uh, three quarters, five eighths, 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 it's thicker. Yeah. This thing, 
that I do is pull away any uneven from uh, cutting it off the, um, that head. And then my very first thing is to take my needle tool and decide where on this bowl I want to put the foot. And the foot really, if it's half the size, it looks too small. So I would say go in about thirds. And so here's half, you know, here's thirds. So if I cut it into thirds, I would put the outside part of my foot here. You know, if I did half, it, the outside foot would be here. And then I do the inside. And this is not the way I was really taught at from um, Susan Schumpert, my first teacher. I was taught, she taught me the same way that she taught, uh, that people used to teach, and then it's start in the middle and go out. Mm -hmm. And I got so frustrated um, after I left, moved from there, because I'd start in the middle, my hand would shake and I'd hit here. So I found the best thing for me uh, is to start here at an angle and cut here. Then I've got it nice and sharp. And then I can also do the same thing here and cut this nice and sharp. Then I don't have to worry when I start here at the beginning, when I get out there, I've already got, I've got a moat, I've got a groove there. So then I just take my regular tool, start here, and I don't even have to go all the way out there. That saved me so much frustration over the years. And so this is just a beginning foot, just a basic foot. Um, when you're gonna glaze, if you're gonna glaze, which I suggest the inside of the foot, um, you're gonna need at least a quarter of an inch, if not a third of an inch in here. If you try and do it where there's an eighth of an inch, so often, because this is convex, it comes up a little bit in the middle, it will touch if your foot is too shallow. So then I just cut away the thick clay from here. And the ideal is that this foot will look, and it always seems so strange to me, it doesn't now, but it seems so strange to me when they were explaining, the inside here should match the outside here. So the foot should look like it's just added on, like it's a ring that was added on. And that was kind of, the ideal, but I think it was more, um, as I think about it, it was more of a thing to, to make it more even, so that it's even throughout. So if you look at a bowl and it, yeah, it just feels, um, I'm sure you've all picked up a piece and you felt like it was thick here and thin here, and um, that's really hard when you're glazing and firing it to maturing temperature if it's thick and thin. It's hard on the glaze fit and it's hard on the piece itself. Um, but if it if it is even throughout, it really makes a difference. And because this is so wet, it's really gummy. I use my fingers a lot to smooth it because the little bit of oil that's on my fingers, and I almost never use hand cream before I throw or anything. I did hear something at Ensika that was really cool. Where, um, did you hear about the vinegar? Yeah, wash your hands and wash your hands, you know, after you work in clay and then and I put vinegar over there. Oh. You know, so and then put and then wash them kind of, I mean just wash put vinegar over it and it changes the pH from your skin, from the clay. Really? pH. Yeah. Oh wow. And I tried it the other day and it just felt oh. soothing. It did I mean there right. was a sensation where it felt really it felt really good. Um, so then this is just your basic foot. So you can do several things. You can take this foot and um, cut through it. And See, this, this one, I um, when I threw it, I kind of semi-trimmed it on the wheel, so it has an inch here. Um, and it's you can tap it, and it sounds more solid. That means it's, it's thicker there. I don't really have to do much around the outside. It's a little wide for this one. Um, so I'm gonna bring it in a little bit. But I, it's nice to play with that clay that you've left. So I'm gonna, if I were trimming in my studio, which I guess I am, um, then I would just go down here, start at the outside. And I still do that. I mean, after all these years, I just find that, it's not that my hand's not steady, I guess, but I just find it's 
reassuring. It's like my security blanket to have that line there. Then I know where I'm going to. This is the same for most thrown forms, not just bowls. I just happen to choose bowls, but plates. You can do the same kind of thing with plates. until it's almost at a peak. And then I'm just gonna take my hands and come up and over it. So it's a rounded peak. And then I'll just go through the middle here and clean that up. So what I've got, um, basically, I'm trying to remember what I've got on the inside. And now what I wanna do is soften this curve here because this is gonna be more of an angular bowl. So I'm just gonna come all the way down here. And I know there are a lot of potters who don't trim far down on their pots, but sometimes it's hard to get the shape you really want without coming back afterwards. So I'm gonna start up here. <laughs> Got a frog this morning. Make a cut here, make a little line here, another line here, another line here. And what I've done is, I mean, I'm so much about threes. Um, these will be lines that will go into the decoration, but they also, um, you can use it to carve. So I'm basically gonna do the same thing I did on one of these, except <clears throat> I'm gonna come straight, straight back. And I'm gonna come, I mean, I know that I've got all this clay to play with. So I'm gonna hold my thumb here, start here, and just come in and down. Okay. And I'm gonna, eyeball it for a third here. here okay and these I'm not going to worry about how messy these are I'll come back and clean those those up when it dries a little bit if I try and clean it up now I find I don't get the crispness that I wanted and then what you can do there's a lot you can do in between here this is all thick and you can leave it, it looks okay, um, upside down. And you've got the places where, if I were to um, wax this, I would wax this part, this part, this part. And you can even put a line on the inside too. <laughs> I don't know why I've got this horse again going on. You can either do geometric shapes here. A couple different ones. Or a lot of times I'll just do like a, a squiggle. 